Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be working on my 2014 Chevrolet Caprice BBV. I'll be refreshing the cooling system in this vehicle. It had its uh, coolant system flush uh, about 10,000 miles ago, so the coolant is within age. It's only like a year and a half old. So I'll be keeping that at this point in time. I'll just be replacing the coolant that I take out of the system. I'll be replacing the water pump because the water pump drive shaft has a bit of free play in it when I last checked it. I'll be replacing, and with the water pump comes a new thermostat housing and thermostat and gaskets, of course. All the pressurized hoses in the engine bay, the upper radiator hose, which is actually made up of two sections plus the bypass hose. I'll be reusing the plastic T because I really couldn't find that one too easily. Uh, the lower radiator hose with the plastic nozzle coming out of the lower radiator, I'll be replacing those. The upper thin hose that goes from the filler neck over to the cylinder head for the bypass bleed off area that uh, will be replaced as well and of course the heater core hoses that are two sections i'm replacing them with the original oem ones i know others have moved it over to the side in like the passenger side on the right of the engine i just decided i was going to use the oem stuff and it was a little difficult finding those so let's flip the camera around to show you what i'll be installing so there are the hoses if i can get this to tilt down where i want there we go so I've got the upper hoses on the left there with the bypass hose, the lower hose next to it, and then in the plastic is the nozzle for the lower radiator hose. The heater core hose is there I have, and then the bleed off hose that's at the uh, top of the radiator over to the, the left cylinder head area. And then I have my airlift, vacuum, uh, leak detection, and quick fill tool, which I used in another video on my Chevrolet SSR. So that's going to be used in this particular video. It, it was great to see that there were no leaks and it took only about two and a half minutes to fill the system. So I hope for similar results today. And then of course, over here, we have our new water pump, like I said, and we have the thermostat housing and new thermostat, the gaskets. And then of course the car. I've already taken the air intake uh, plastic pieces out of the way to give a little more visibility here. And of course I'll be taking off the drive belts, get those out of the way, protect them from the coolant. And of course I have to take off the main one anyway for the water pump, but I'll also be taking off the air conditioner one as well. Then I'll be putting some plastic underneath the water pump to capture the, hopefully most of the coolant that comes out of it into a pan underneath. The front bumper fascia extension, I won't show that in the video as far as removal because that's necessary to remove, but uh, I'll put a link in the description section to another video where I included that in the video if you need to see that. It's just a bunch of screws on the front at the bumper fascia and some bolts and then it drops out in a few screws on in the wheel well area that you need to remove as well. But I've got some cameras on each side and I'll try to capture as much of what's going on. Uh, hopefully th this is not meant to necessarily be a how-to, but it should show you a pretty much all-inclusive set of steps for refreshing all the hoses. But use it for your entertainment purposes and let's get to it. One additional part of the pressurized system, of course, is the radiator cap. I replaced that at the end, and that's AC Delco part number RC115. There's a couple of O-rings on that that compress over time, so it's worth replacing as well. And I will have a link down in the description section to that, and I'll have potentially other affiliate links to the parts involved in this cooling system refresh process. This is a longer video, so you might want to check out the section guide that I have here on the screen. And you might want to check out the picture that's on the screen and the corresponding video section there. I had to repair a broken nipple on the upper part of the radiator. So you might want to check out that section and see the fun that was involved in getting that repaired to get this installation completed. We have the front bumper fascia extension removed. The drain plug here is located here six millimeter allen socket or wrench and then you need that front bumper fascia extension removed to gain access to this uh, plastic nozzle extension from the bottom of the radiator so there's the retention clip but let's get the radiator draining okay. and i'll go remove the uh, radiator cap And the flow is started. So let's let that drain. While the radiator is draining, I'm going to start removing the dry belts and also remove the belt tensioner from the water pump since that has to come off and be transferred over to the new water pump. First, let's get the tension off of this. It's a 15 millimeter. And if you're normally doing this with 
without the intention of removing the water pump or anything, you would simply get a 15 millimeter. You don't want to go all the way down, you know, here or anything, because when it comes back, you'll be further because there'll be less, there's no tension on it. So you want to go at some point in the right direction. Move the tension off the belt, take it off, and then release the tension that way. And I usually remember which direction it was rotating. I usually hang it on something nearby with the front towards the wall, at least in the same direction as the engine's oriented, so I know to put it back on the same way. And then down here, let's see if we can get a little more light on that. We have this, the idler pulley for the AC belt and then the tensioner pulley here. So let's see if we can get a wrench on that. All right, we have the 15 on here. Again, I'm just going to use it to remove the tension. Take it off. And if it tilts at all, it's too wide to come out. thing oriented in the same direction just to keep the same direction rotation and ribs of the pulleys on the same grooves in the uh, belt itself and it looks like this tensioner pulley has two bolts securing it to the water pump so I'm going to remove those so we have the tensioner pulley out of the way we have the two drive belts out of the way. Let's check this end play on the... I can rock it back and forth. There's actually a, a physical... It's not very visible. Um, it, there's a physical... You might be able to pick that up on camera. But that shouldn't be there. So that's the reason it's getting replaced because I'm sure that's going to be leaking soon. I'm going to, since I removed that other plate, that gives more direct drain uh, flow to any fluid that comes out of the water pump area. Again, I'll be adding a plastic bag, but I'm going to take the idler uh, pulleys and tensioner pulleys for the AC and over here for the main dry belt out of the way just to make sure they don't get uh, contaminated. And those look to be 15 millimeter bolts here. AC tensioner is a Torx T30. Now that I have those pulleys and belts and everything out of the way, I'm going to place some plastic bags in this area. I'm going to put the drain pan, which I've closed the drain plug area of the uh, Radiator. Let's try to get the uh, small hose disconnected here. up here at the radiator under these tabs and then we're gonna have to work on that end a little bit don't want to get too aggressive with the plastic nipple coming out of this radiator I don't want to break it off it 
looks like it was coming off reasonably well when I removed the tension. There we go. And this is where I'm working right now. The new hose comes with clamps already on it, so I don't need to transfer anything over. All right, I'm gonna <clears throat> remove the upper radiator hose from both ends. I'm also gonna try to uh, remove it from the lower section here with with the T-fittings, and I'll take that off to off vehicle, and then I'll try to remove that as gently as possible. So. This one should come off re really easy because I only had it off before when I worked on the electrical fan, the electric fans for the cooling system here. I guess I could use the pick to try to pull that off since we're replacing it. You never want to jab this into the metal. In the hose it doesn't matter too much as for the hose state. There we go. And we do have a little bit of coolant left in that. Let's pour that into the drain pan. Put that back on for the second here. And let's get this hose off on the bottom. Rotate it so it's a little easier to get to, and bring it off the nipple. Okay, just gonna try to get a little bit on the hose, not on the tubing. Try to break it free here. There we go. A little bit of drainage there. It being a low point, there's gonna be more fluid coming out like that. Should allow us to pull that hose out. Again, the pick is never to be used on the metal. It's only to be put underneath the hose and pulled up on it. And since I was replacing the hose anyway, I got a little more aggressive with the hose, but you want to be very careful whenever you use one of those. Here's the replacements. I'll have to transfer over the clamps from this one. And let's see this way. The upper part. And this one for the front part, rear part lower part. So we've got all three hoses and they look to be correct. So now we're going to attack the lower radiator hose at the water pump end. We could take the housing off to expose all that. Um, since it's going to be replaced, there's no sense in just taking that apart just to take it apart. Now if we run into problems, of course, we'll consider that, but 
Let's see what we can do here. Okay, it's been released from the hose, which we'll have to transfer over. Let's see if we can pry this a little bit loose with this. I'm replacing all of it. I'm not being extremely careful with it, but any drains out for whatever bizarre reason. Generally, so let's get the heater core hoses removed. And there might be a flood of fluid coming out since we're behind the thermostat here. So let me get this prepped. Now on the upper end by the heater core, I put some plastic bags in case there's any additional coolant coming out of the heater core. Ended up not being any, but I just thought it was a good precaution just in case. And these are pretty easy to remove. Just be careful not to get too aggressive forward and backward moving on the tubing. All right, I'm gonna clean these two off and put the hose section that's appropriate for this one on. Just so we don't have any leaking fluid back here. Cleaning is off first. Gonna spray a little bit of detailing spray in here to lube the uh, hose a little bit. This will dry pretty quickly. Use that so many times to get uh, hoses connected. Clamps on. I remove them to a uh, somewhat favorable position on each one. Okay, those are on. And now I'm removing the original water pump, which has the end play in the drive shaft, so that's why it's being replaced. Getting the gaskets off, cleaning the surfaces of the residual gasket material, and then installing water pump number one, because I found the replacement water pump to have a defective wobbly pulley on it. And then I find I run into a situation just after getting the upper radiator hose with the bypass hose installed, where I installed the upper air bleed hose by the radiator cap and You'll see what happens in just a moment here. It goes well up to this point, and I need to rotate it just a little bit. And then in just a second here, you'll see it and... <gasps> that happened. <laughs> that was uh, going so well. I had the hose lubricated. It was moving well, but I just put a little bit of pressure on it and apparently there was a pre-existing crack or one I hadn't seen before and then the nipple broke off. So I'm standing here in amazement and th thinking of many colorful metaphors at that point, um, but I have to find a solution to resolve this. O otherwise I have to spend about $450 to purchase a new AC Delco radiator. And I really didn't want to have to do that. I have a hose barb here connection brass fitting. It's a 5 16 by 1 8 And the, I had a 5 16 by 1 quarter, but it was just gonna take too much material out of this whole thing here. So I got the 5 16 by 1 8 I have a 2164 drill, which is an approximate of Q size drill bit. And that then corresponds to the tap I have for the 27 pitch threads on this. So I'm gonna cut off the excess here to flatten this out to allow me to do the drilling a little bit easier. So I have my Dremel I'm gonna use to cut this off. And then I'm gonna 
make sure I don't drop anything in. I have some tape in here to protect the inner part of the radiator and I'll use some compressed air or vacuum to bring out the items that I do collect in there. So let's start it. As you can see, we have a little gouge out here. So the JB weld I'm gonna use with along with the brass fitting is going to help fill in that and hopefully the drill will take out some of that. I'm gonna start off with the drill just under a quarter inch. Took out a portion of that uh, chipped part. Here is the 2164 drill bit. Prepping for the tap. Eagerly. So this is the tap in theory for this uh, nipple. So I'm just seeing if I can at least start it. Looks like it will bite. I use a quarter inch drive set with an extension to grab the top of the tap uh, to rotate it back and forth. I do go in a little bit, back it out, and I use WD-40 as a lubricant. Tap is beginning to come through on the inside. There's an inner ridge there. I wanted to make sure I didn't get too far with the tap and break that off. And the total tapping time was about three to four minutes. It's basically just about bottom out on that inner ridge. All right, I'm gonna back it out now. So we got about this far into it with the uh, tap. The threads are present all the way around. Now I just need to clean up the debris that was generated. I have the tape in there to catch the larger chunks. And it looks like our section that had the uh, chunk to taken out of it uh, from the brake is gone. So it looks like we're good threads all the way around. And I vacuum out the pieces in there. Okay, we're clear of any pieces in there. I'm gonna see how far this screws in because we do have that piece behind it, so we'll have to see. Looks like it will tighten up much sooner than that. <laughs> See how far we get in with this, or really. Looks like it's just about through the threads. So, what I'm going to do is when I get the JB weld, I'm going to course remove this put the JB weld on the threads I don't want to put it on the inside necessarily I don't want it's supposed to be capable of handling chemicals and up to 500 degrees heat I, I wanted to see if uh, I could maybe just put it on the outside here and uh, of course in the threads but let's take a look on the inside here
and we're we've pushed through the plastic to the just a thread or two in there so I don't want to get too deep into it because we do have to allow for the water flow to go around because the nipple before was only in the plastic so there was a that's a baffle of some sort on the inside to defer the water downward so I don't want to get too close to it but uh, we're reasonably tight at this point and I don't want to provoke the plastic with any extra tension here but uh, so far we're looking good I'm gonna get a mirror to look from the hose end of it That looks good. I don't see any stress cracks or anything in the plastic. I'll have to go through a few heat cycles to make sure there's nothing that shows up on this. That's why I don't want to get too aggressive because this is a tapered pipe thread. And uh, I just want to make sure that it seals and no more. It's a fairly low pressure system overall, so I don't need to have it super, super tight but uh, it does have to be appropriately tight. The 5 16 inch barb by one quarter were going to be too much. I was gonna have to take too much plastic off of that. So the 5 16 by one eighth is what I have in there now. And that seems to be just the right size. I'm doing a leak check with my airlift vacuum checker for the cooling system and also vacuum quick fill. And I've got the old hose on here with the uh, clamp and I've uh, put stoppers in on the top and bottom. The bottom still has the hose attached. And I did a vacuum pull on this and it's just about, it's right at the tip of the two on 25. And I'm gonna see if it loses any vacuum. As you can see in this video, it did drop a little bit. So I was questioning the quality of the radiator at this point. So I pulled the radiator and I ended up choosing a different test approach by moving the test tool to the upper radiator hose nipple area and then sealing off the top part and that ended up working. So it's actually a good radiator and fix. It's just this test approach was not the best one. I have the vacuum tester on the upper hose nipple on the radiator and it seems that the base of that when I was tightening it up it was pulling up just enough to get a little bit of bleed by. Since I've uh, moved it there it's been just beyond the uh, 25 mark and I think we're well over 10 minutes now. Let's uh, take a look. We are and we're 11 minutes almost. So, it was a test issue before, so now it's been holding it with no loss of vacuum. So the radiator is good. I still don't have the JB weld on there, but I will retest this again before I reinsert it into the car in this manner and verify that the JB weld version of this works and then get it back in the car. But this does give me the opportunity to remove all the best I can claim is shrubbery. <laughs> there was a bunch of weeds and bushes and branches and everything that was kind of over on this side of it. So I'm going to clean that off as well. I now have the epoxy cured on the new brass fitting that I replaced yesterday. I have the new hose attached to it with its clamp. I have a drill bit on that end of the uh, hose. Let's get that's a little bit more away from the fins there. And I have the uh, gauge on the upper radiator hose uh, area. I tried putting it into the fill neck yesterday and I was getting a bleed down, which I thought was potentially a bad radiator. I went through all the different iterations and I had to eliminate it by moving it. And then the radiator had no leaks. So let's uh, see what we get with all these items here. So I can at least assume this is good. I've already tested the fire wall uh, hoses for the heater core up to the water pump. Those have no leaks. So we're good so far. Let's see if we can continue the trend with the repair done to the radiator. So this is, let's turn this off.
So let's take a look at this and we'll see where we are. We are basically at the green zone just past 25. The white bar is exposed. So I'm going to go ahead and set the timer on my phone to see. I'm going to let this go for 10 minutes, make sure that we have no leaks. And of course we can see down here that the new hose has collapsed, which is expected. And I want to make sure I leak tested the new O-ring and everything on the elbow and everything. So let's begin the countdown. I found that I had a slight bleed down on this particular test, but I had failed to clamp down the overflow tubing, which I had done on the previous test the day before, before the epoxy was applied. So I'm going to reset and start the test again. I readjusted some of the rubber bushings here that are used as stoppers to see if I can identify where I had a slight bleed down in my previous test. And I've also clamped off this extra overflow hose in case it's getting by this in the filler neck. I had that clamped off yesterday as well during the just the radiator bleed down test. So let's go ahead and fill this again. just into the green at 25. And let's get the timer started. Well, we're 11 and a half minutes into this and the vacuum has not changed, so this system is apparently leak-free, at least a vacuum detected leaks. And we'll have to see as it heat cycles whether anything else shows up. But uh, this test is complete. Removing the radiator like I did was helpful in a couple of ways. It let me, of course, perform the final part of the repair on the nipple repair and the leak down test on the radiator. But the other part of it was the lower radiator plastic elbow. The lower section of the radiator sits within two support brackets that make it nearly impossible to remove that without elevating the bottom of the radiator to some degree, be it within the vehicle or outside. Removing the radiator does have a couple of caveats where you have some plastic tabs on the front of the radiator that go underneath the AC to condenser, so be careful of that. And also when I reinstalled, the transmission lines were somewhat difficult to get back in place, and I did have a slight leak in one of them for a little bit, or at least I had some residual fluid coming out, but it ended up drying up nicely. I do have some spare O-rings coming. The water pump, this is the second one I'm installing, and this is the one that replaced the one with the wobbly pulley. The first pass on the bolts is 11 foot-pounds, and the second pass is 22 foot-pounds. And I start getting the upper hoses and then the lower hoses here connected to the water pump. And then I do a leak down test of the system minus the one connection at the upper end of the radiator because I couldn't get the full seal at the radiator cap area, but I, that's good enough to do the coolant fill. But notice I don't have my cooling fans in place with the upper radiator hose already connected. Mistake. So I'll learn from that in just a moment here, but I get the belts back on. And this is when I realized, whoops, I put the hose back on. I shouldn't have. I knew that from the when I replaced the cooling fan motors a few weeks ago. So learned that lesson again and got it installed. Get it filled up, put the radiator cap on, look for any leaks once you get the vehicle started, take some test drives, look for a transmission cooling line leaks and cooling system leaks all throughout the system. Once it's fully cooled down, remove the radiator cap, check the fluid level, make sure it's full on that side and also check your overflow tank as well. Make sure they're within normal limits. And a few more times over the next couple of weeks, do a random check of the cooling system, make sure there's no leaks and coolant level's good, then you're done. As you can tell, the entire process took a bit more effort than I was originally anticipating. I was hoping to perform the entire cooling system refresh leaving the radiator in the vehicle. I would probably need to elevate the radiator at least to replace the plastic elbow that you see here because of it being down at the bottom, the bottom of the radiator being in the, between those two support brackets, it just seems impossible to do it there. Maybe I don't know a trick about it, but you'd have to at least lift it up there, which means you have to unbolt it from the AC condenser and the transmission cooler on the front to be able to lift it up enough to make that happen. But in my case, I pulled it out because I was suspicious of the leak down test as far as whether the radiator was leaking and it ended up being the test itself. So 
the nipple being repaired. I have the JB weld on the threads and on the exterior of it. I bought the marine version of this to make sure that I had the high temp and resistance to chemicals. So hopefully the uh, video has been helpful to you. It showed you the steps potentially just to repair yours if you run into something like that. And if you like the content of the video, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos like this to the channel. Check out my other Caprice videos with the Caprice playlist down in the description section. And make sure you check out all the other links and do that all of that YouTubery stuff down in the description section. Check out the affiliate links and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.